two starts in a row, two fantastic outings tonight, three innings pitch, no earned runs. What was working so well for you on the mound tonight? Uh, fastball command was really good. I had my slider today, which was nice, and uh, mixing in some change-ups, keeping them off balance. I want to take you back to your final out. There was two outs. Darren Baker, one of the fastest guys in the Cape, was on third base, or uh, the leadoff guy was on third base. Darren Baker, one of the best hitters in the Cape, was at the plate. You could have easily pitched around him, tried to locate. There was an open bag, but you went right to him and got three strikes for a strikeout. Is that how you approach the game in terms of aggressiveness? Yeah, I mean, I just think if my stuff's on, I have a chance against anybody, um, and as long as I'm in the zone, then I'm competitive and just go right after him. You let out a loud grunt on that final fastball that you threw him by. Was that you mustered up all your strength on that one? Yeah, I was trying to run it by him. <laughs> just trying to get it in there and run it by him. So. Well, it worked out. And this time, you know, last Sunday when you played against Bourne, it was a two to one loss. And here you go, you get a one zero win. Is it nice to be on this end of the, of the game? Absolutely. Yeah, hate losing. So, <laughs> but uh, be on the on the winning side is great. Pitching three innings, watching four more with different relieving pitchers come in and save the day, really, and close things out for you. How much confidence does that give you in this team? Oh, it's huge. I mean, you, you know that you can come out of the game, and uh, if you got a lead, it's going to stay there. And if you got a lot, if you're losing, I mean, just let the offense work because they're not going to score too many more. Your command was working. Do you find that after you pitch in a game, you're a little more invested in it? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, when when you've played in the game, there's, you're you're in it more because you've been a part of it, whereas you're just on the bench, you're just kind of hanging out, just watching. You'll get that opportunity to hang out, kind of relax, you get a big off day, everybody does tomorrow. What's in store for you in the next five or six days as you're not going to be on the bump? Um, get my lifts in, get some uh, some dry work in, some throwing in, and hopefully get, uh, get on the golf course a little bit. All right, I love that. No, I went on the other, the Wareham broadcast, and I talked about the heck of a mane of a beard you have today, and they were just, they were blown away by it. So, fantastic job there, fantastic job today. Thanks Thank so much you. for the time. And thank you, Scott. Again, that was our sign reporter, Scotty Gange, alongside our bird ball of the game at Noah Skirl. Now I'm joined alongside the man of the hour so far here on the whole offense for the Firebirds, Shea Whitcomb. Now, Shea, you're coming into this game. You're one for 13, and you hit that home run. How does it feel to, to finally get on, to get on the board here? Uh, I mean, it feels good. I mean, yeah, I was off to a slow start, but it was good to, uh, good confidence booster for me. So that was a key at bat. It was a key at bat, not only for you, but also for the Firebirds in the game. They hold on to win that game by a score of one to nothing. But going back to the defensive side of things, the Firebirds so far, I mean, they've been looking pretty pretty sharp out there on the defensive side. Tanner Murray making some nice plays. How does it energize maybe you guys, maybe you or yourself and the team, seeing plays like that being made? Yeah, I mean, great plays always energize, energize our players, and especially good plays in key situations. I mean, that's what gets it going. Well, it's fun for us to watch here in the booth as well, uh, seeing plays like that. A couple web gems out there we've seen throughout the season. Um, going back to the first game, Ray Gill hitting that walk-off home run. What was the mood really in the dugout maybe for you guys going into game two? Um, I mean, it was definitely up. I mean, that hit was huge. I mean, we he's been kind of struggling too, so that at-bat was, was big, and it definitely gave us a lot of confidence going into game two. And props to uh, Noah for throwing really good. Yeah, the starting pitching and just the pitching in general has been really fun to watch, and it's been really sharp on the mound uh, for the Firebirds. Now, you're a guy that's coming from a D2 school. Now you're here on the Cape. What's the transition like coming from, from all the way out in California? I mean, it's a little different. It's not too much uh, of a change, but definitely the scenery and the players and, and maybe pitching a little bit, but it's definitely nothing too, too dramatic, too drastic. So you're coming up on an off day tomorrow. I know you're a big fishing and surfing guy. What's what's on the schedule for tomorrow? <laughs> I mean, if there was waves, I'd probably be out there <laughs> surfing. But uh, I'm not in San Diego. But um, definitely at the gym and maybe hang out with some some guys. We got a little poker nights going. So well, watch you know. out, Shea Whitcomb might run the table there. <laughs> so again, uh, that will conclude our interview here with Shea Whitcomb. Shea, thank you very much for thank joining you. me and good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Again, that was Shea Wickham. He provided the solo home run for the Firebirds here in this game. And Firebirds hold on the win, one to nothing. As we're going to send it back down to our side reporter, Scotty Gaines. Scotty? Yeah, fantastic outings from 
really everybody on the mound today for the Orleans Firebirds. Hello, everybody. Welcome into the Bird's Eye View postgame show. We just heard from our guy Shea Witt coming with the home run with our broadcaster Thomas Cinzarella. Sat down with Noah Scuro, the starter for game two. We want to break down what's coming next for the Firebirds. Tomorrow it's an off day and a well-deserved off day. Two straight wins. The first time all season they've done that. So it's their first winning streak. The Birds fans are, are officially hot. The Birds are hot. It's fantastic. A day off tomorrow. Everybody gets to relax, cool down after these two games today. And then on Tuesday, we're going to be right here for one of the biggest early games of the season. The Chatham Anglers and the Orleans Firebirds. That's going to be here at Eldridge Park at 7 p.m. Chatham is highlighted by their superstar uh, first baseman, Spencer Torkelson. He was activated yesterday, and he is one of the best players in college baseball coming out of Arizona State. As a freshman, he hit 27 home runs at Arizona State, which led the country. He left nothing really up to desire this season as he was again a unanimous All-American at Arizona State in his sophomore campaign and in his second year now for the Chatham Anglers. He's going to be the player to watch on the offensive side and there's lots of players to watch on the pitching side as Chatham pitching has been outstanding but not as good as the Orleans Firebirds. That is in numbers at least. 14 innings played today. Big ol' zero runs allowed. 1-0 game in both of them. Of course, the Ray Gill home run in game one and the Shea Whitcomb home run in game two. Ray and Shea, they stole the day. Guys, Thomas, I'm going to send it back to you. We're going to bring on some guys. Josh White, broadcaster, he's about to come in. Going to try to grab a coach in here as well for the Birds Eye View postgame show. Going to take a quick break. Have a whole lot of baseball to talk about today. Yeah, we are lucky to have the bullpen catcher in here today. Lane, thanks so much for yeah. joining in. And we talked about it, 14 innings, no runs allowed. And I know you had a different perspective because for a lot of these relieving guys, you caught them while they were warming up in the bullpen. What was different today in your eyes? Yeah, so, you know, I got to go through all these guys today. Uh, they all looked really good. The only thing I would say the big difference is you get really tired out here. You have two doubleheader games. These guys, are they do a lot of sitting around. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that they get ready and they're always on top of the game because it could be you know, a pitch, an inning, and Skip can go out there and say, we need you right now. So they always got to be ready. They all did really good really good today. Yeah. I know a lot of that responsibility of keeping that ready is kind of in your hands and trying to just keep them warm, at least get them warm quickly. Yep. What was your job in that today and how was it different in the fact that there was two ball games and every pitcher seemed to be on? Yeah, every pitcher seemed to be on today. Honestly, it's all it's all the bullpen. They, they all do a great job just, you know, just getting ready. Uh, everybody, just, you know, it was a staff game. So a lot of guys, you know, followed through and did what did what they had to do to get ready today. Yeah. So. The fun thing for today was the fact that there's been so many rain outs, fog outs. Everybody was warm. I know you were warm. You've been probably hanging out for a lot this week just like everybody on the team has yeah. in terms of approach and you coming in mm -hmm. knowing that every single pitcher is able to pitch mm -hmm. did that change your mindset walking into the field today yeah you cannot have your changed mindset uh the rain delays definitely will mess with you a little bit because you never know honestly you could be playing <laughs> you could be not so but you know just like me a lot of these guys here they're always ready to play yeah lane's got a fantastic story later next week we're going to do a whole breakdown he's going to be catching bp and i'm going to be talking so he's going to be doing the work and i'm just going to be talking back and forth with him once we get all the right gear and once we're ready to go. Sound yeah. good? Yeah, everything sounds great. Yeah, thank you so much. Can't wait for it, Lane. Thanks so much for yeah, joining absolutely. in on the Bird's Eye View postgame show. Thomas, we got a whole lot of baseball again to talk about today. I'm going to send it back to you, and we're going to continue this show here. And thank you, Scotty. It's a right. brilliant interview bringing some insight from the bullpen area. We don't get to hear that very often. Again, that's our sign reporter, Scotty Gaines, here on the Bird's Eye View postgame. Thanks, Thomas. Let's recap to the first game, and here's Jared Schuster, the star of the first game. Three innings pitch, no earned runs. It seems kind of like a review, a replay of last week, Jared. Yeah, uh, I was just trying to stay with the strong start and build off that, and then towards next week do the same thing. So it's fun for me. I told you as we're walking over here, this is the full circle interview because I talked to you before the game. We were going through some of your rituals, what we were looking for. And it seems like everything you said you were going to try to do today, you did. In terms of accomplishment, how do you feel about yourself right now? I mean, I feel really good. They had a lot of lefties in our lineup, so I try to work with my slider more than my changeup and worked well. Yeah, I noticed you were working a lot with the slider and the changeup, too. Those are both plus pitches. In my eyes, they are. And it seems like there was lots of swings and misses and really no problems on the base pass. When you're rolling so well through these innings, how do you really maintain that focus and composure up on the bump? Uh, breathing helps a lot with that. So if you make a bad pitch, you just reset. And yeah, uh, breathing and taking some time off. And David came up to me when I was on the mound and helped me reset also, so it always helps. I talked to Noah Skiro just a few moments ago and I said, you know, just like him, you've got five or six days to relax and to get some rehab in and some working out. In terms of the next three or four, what, is, what are you going to do to kind of break down this game and look forward to move on to the other? Is it a mindset thing? You're going to be working out the arm a little more? What's your routine? Uh, so tomorrow I'll get a good lift in, get a couple more through the week, and then 
So a couple of bullpens, try to work, build off what happened today and work on with work on what I need to work on with Troop. We've got another game next Sunday, and you're probably slated to pitch then just because that's the way it's been working out. Are we going to shave next Sunday? For sure, definitely. Right. That sounds fantastic. It seems like it's working for you. Yeah. Jared Sch Schuster, he was the star of game one. Thanks so much for joining in. We'll let you go. It's dinner time, isn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty hungry now. All right, go, 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 go. Thank you, Jared. I appreciate your time. Thomas, we're going to send it back to you. we got one more segment here on the Bird's Eye View postgame show. I think we have a new thing. It's called Schuster Shave Sunday or something like that. As Jared Schuster was the man who started game one through a gem for the Firebirds once again. He started. Going to close out the Bird's Eye View postgame show here. Thomas, I appreciate you kind of filling us in and what happened today, what's about to happen, is it was a great day of baseball for the Orleans Firebirds. If you've been watching with us for the past several hours, you know that. But if you haven't, let's break down really what happened today. 14 innings of no-run baseball. A 1-0 win in Game 1, highlighted by the Ray Gill walk-off homer, and a 1-0 win in Game 2, highlighted by the Shea Whitcomb third inning home run. The team was just absolutely outstanding. Everybody on all levels in terms of the pitching staff was outstanding, and it was very fun to watch on the outside and also on the inside. I've been kind of talking with some of the guys, and they're just like, wow, you know, 14 innings? I had no idea we played 14 innings of no-run allowed baseball, four and two-thirds before that. So the streak for the Orleans Firebirds is 18 and two-thirds innings of pitched, innings pitched, without allowing a run. This team is doing absolutely fantastic on the bump in terms of starting, relieving, and everything in between. The fielding was fantastic as well. Tanner Murray made a highlight play in the fifth inning at third base, made the double play, and we've got athletes out there, and it's really fun to watch on our end. And it's just been fun to watch for the fans today as well. You know, you'd think two runs in 14 innings wouldn't really be much of a fan experience, but it really was. Walking around the field, everybody was smiling, and enjoying their day, and talking to some of the fans. They said this was a great day for baseball, not just because of the amazing weather, but because of the amazing gameplay really on both sides. You have to tip your cap to the Wareham Gateman. Their pitching staff did great, too. Two pitches really defined two games today and four points for the Orleans Firebirds, and I cannot go more of how important that was for the Firebirds. Tuesday night again, Chatham here. It's a rivalry game. It's an Eastern League matchup, and it's just going to be fantastic. I can't wait. We're going to wrap up the Bird's Eye View show right here. Scotty Gange here. We appreciate the bullpen catcher Lane coming in. We appreciate everybody earlier in the game, Noah Skiro, Jared Schuster, and Coach Brendan Igebrot coming in in the bird's eye view pregame, postgame show in between the two games today. But for me and for everybody, for our producer, Bryce Johnson, Thomas, Josh, Thomas, I know you're going to want to close the show out with a, with a few more notes. But for everybody here in studio, we appreciate you all. We'll see you on Tuesday for our pregame show. That's going to start at 6.40 p.m. right here on our YouTube live channel.